Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Welcome back. Uh, so we have now seen what do we mean by frequency uh, domain analysis and that uh, what we do is uh, we capture what is known as frequency response of a system uh, that is uh, we compute what is amplitude ratio and phase, what is the variation of amplitude ratio and phase uh, with respect to frequency and we have seen that it can be represented as a body diagram or an Nyquist diagram. So let us now see how do we use this information uh, to compute or to assess the stability of a feedback system. So we will see uh, stability assessment of feedback system in frequency domain. So in order to do that uh, we will consider one thought experiment so that it will help us uh, kind of uh, understand what are, what are the stability conditions uh, when we uh, do the stability analysis and frequency domain uh, and there are in fact we are going to see uh, two stability criteria and both these uh, are sort of evident from this uh, simple thought experiment. So let us uh, consider uh, an imaginary experiment of a feedback system. So let us start with a feedback system. Uh, this is our process GP. This is the disturbance transfer function. This gives you output Y. Then you have a measurement. Then you have this measured output. Uh, if we go back from here, you have the wall transfer function. Before that, we have the controller transfer function and this is error and error is the difference between the measured value and the set value. So I have deliberately uh, not shown this particular link uh, because in this uh, thought experiment uh, what we are going to consider uh, is that uh, we are going to see, uh, we are going to inject uh, sinusoidal input here. So we are going to say the set point uh, trajectory is a sinusoid input. So let us say this is a sin omega t. We are going to input a sinusoid here. Uh, that kind of brings in why we are in the frequency domain. And then accordingly uh, we monitor how does uh, ym look like. So and uh, in the sort of even though we are assessing the stability of a feedback system, uh, the analysis or the thought experiment actually starts with the open loop that we have opened this loop. Uh, we are not going to feedback the measured value, we are just going to assess the feedback value. So uh, if you see uh, what we have is uh, in this case uh, the error is y set minus ym, uh, here ym is not supplied so let us consider it to be 0 which is equal to a sin omega t. So your error is a sin omega t and uh, if you look at what is the transfer function between ym and epsilon s it is if you are to go from epsilon to ym it is GC times GV times GP times GM and this is also represented uh, called as GOL. So it is called as an open loop uh, transfer function between the measured output and the error which is the product of these four transfer functions and we are going to give a sinusoidal input uh, here as, an as Y set but it is going to be equal to epsilon because YM is 0. And as there are these four processes, uh, depending on these four transfer functions, uh, we will see the output ym uh, will again be a sinusoid 
so even though i'm saying we want to monitor y m it is going to be a sinusoid with a certain phase so it will have a certain phase and it will have a certain amplitude ratio so this will be amplitude ratio times a <coughs> because if this is a so uh, we have already seen uh, how do we compute these two so we know that uh, if this is the input sinusoid and we are interested in finding the output uh, then this ar and phi uh, would be obtained by using the frequency response of this particular transfer function which is the product of these four transfer functions so depending on the frequency uh, these phase as well as amplitude ratios would change so uh, in this particular system uh, let us try to see uh, that consider a frequency <coughs> so we'll consider a frequency omega such that the corresponding phase is minus pi or minus 180 degrees <coughs> so uh, in that case uh, if i say ym will be equal to uh, whatever is the amplitude ratio times a into sin of omega t plus phi omega t minus pi so it is going to be equal to minus a times ar sin of omega t so what we are seeing is uh, so this ym is inverted form of y set because it is minus uh, and we have some magnification or reduction in terms of amplitude but if you look at overall signal uh, the y so this is equal to y set so this is actually ar minus ar times y set so that is why i said it's inverted because there is a minus sign there is a gain of ar or otherwise it looks very much like y set so now uh, coming back to our thought experiment now let us see that uh, uh, we have this particular frequency uh, omega at which phase is minus pi so that this is minus of ar times y set and at that uh, whenever you have that you we have found that frequency uh, you now close the loop so at that particular point uh, we are going to close the loop and we are going to make it zero so what we are going to do is we are going to close the loop and y set goes to zero now let us look at what would be the error error is still y set minus ym so now y set is zero and ym we have just calculated as minus a ar sin of omega t so this is equal to a times ar sin of omega t so you can see that uh, earlier our error error was a sin omega t now it looks very similar to that uh, even though the set point is not there Uh, we have uh, still have error is a sin omega t which is multiplied by ar so let us consider that if ar is equal to 1 then epsilon t is equal to a sin omega t so you see that epsilon is a sin omega t which is same as uh, what we had put in earlier so that means uh, before closing the loop uh, the system was oscillating at a sin omega with this frequency and the moment i close the loop and even though there is no set point change so when i say y set equal to 0 uh, all these are deviation variables so that means the system is not subjected to any external conditioning 
and still uh, this epsilon is equal to a sin omega t it will go through all these transfer functions and what comes out is still a sin omega t and then the system will keep on oscillating at a sin omega t. So, the implication of this is that uh, even though y set is equal to 0 system continues to oscillate or sustained oscillation even though the original source of the oscillation is gone. So, that means uh, if I have phase of minus pi and if the corresponding amplitude ratio is 1 then I am going to get sustained oscillations. So, what are the results out of so results from the thought experiment? If phase is equal to minus pi and corresponding a r equal to 1 we get sustained oscillations. And if you recall from the previous definitions of stability, this is as good as marginal stability and it typically represents the limit of stability. Now, let us consider if for the same phi equal to pi, a r is greater than 1. So, we go back to this same figure, <coughs> we have closed uh, before closing the loop uh, we know that this y m or this recirculating error is going to be a times a r sin of omega t. So, what does that mean? Uh, we close the loop, we made the y set to be 0 and uh, if a r is greater than 1, if I sub put in a sin omega t what I get is something which is more than a sin omega t then that goes into this next cycle what you will get is even higher than that. So, every successive cycle uh, so every successive cycle amplitude grows. because you will get a r raised to n. <coughs> so, the amplitude will keep on becoming a a r raised to n. So, what does that mean? The system is unstable because the system will have growing oscillations. And similarly, uh, you can also show that if the for the corresponding case a r was less than 1, in that case every successive oscillation uh, would have a uh, would have a smaller magnitude. So, oscillations diminish and what you have is a stable system. So, simply by uh, looking at uh, what happens when your phase is minus pi uh, through this thought experiment we can make a claim that if at this particular frequency if amplitude ratio is 1 the system has a stability limit is at the stability limit if that corresponding amplitude ratio is greater than 1 the closed loop system is unstable and if that phi uh, if that corresponding amplitude ratio is less than 1 then you have an unstable when you have a stable system. So, what all we need to do is uh, in order to assess the stability you start with the open loop transfer function which is g p g v g c g m then you compute its amplitude ratio and phi which is the amplitude of g o l and angle of g o l then you compute omega equal to what we call as a crossover frequency such that phi of omega cross over is equal to minus pi and then you compute a r at omega cross over. If it is equal to 1 you get sustained oscillation 
or marginal stability if it is less than 1 it is stable if it greater than 1 unstable so this principle we will be using uh, in order to formulate uh, two stability criteria in frequency domain uh, the first of which uh, is known as a body stability criteria <coughs> so which is uh, presented uh, here so you can see that uh, in the body's uh, stability criteria uh, it starts with an assumption that if uh, ar with amplitude ratio and phi are the monotonous functions of frequency uh, which are typically most of the cases uh, is most of the times is the case uh, the feedback system is unstable if the amplitude ratio at the crossover frequency uh, which is when phase is equal to minus pi or minus 180 degree is greater than 1. So that is the body stability criteria and in order to compute that uh, we need this GOL which is GP, GV, GC and GM. So it follows directly from the thought experiment uh, that you compute the frequency at which omega uh, at which phi is minus pi and compute the corresponding amplitude ratio if it is greater than 1 system is unstable if it is less than 1 it will be stable. So here it is represented as a body diagram uh, for a stable system uh, you can see that uh, at this particular frequency uh, you would see that the phase is minus pi and then you move up into the first figure you compute uh, what is the corresponding AR. Uh, this is a MATLAB plot. Uh, so, in MATLAB uh, AR is given as a, a in a decibel unit. Uh, so, it is 20 log of amplitude ratio. So, if amplitude ratio is equal to 1, uh, this decibel will be equal to 0. So, as long as this uh, decibel value is uh, positive, which means AR is greater than 1, uh, the system is unstable. Uh, here, this decibel value is negative. So, the system is stable. So, uh, by you just naturally following from this thought experiment uh, what we have found uh, is that using the body stability criteria all we need is uh, compute uh, the corresponding crossover frequency uh, and check the amplitude ratio if it is greater than 1 system is unstable. Then we uh, so the major assumption in the body's uh, stability criteria uh, is that uh, these AR and phi are monotonous functions of frequency. And by that uh, we mean as we keep on increasing omega from 0 to infinity, uh, AR and phi both change in the same direction. And for a first order system, uh, second order system, these normal transfer functions, this is indeed the case for most of the time that AR and phi both will decrease uh, like uh, this figure. But in some cases uh, this condition is not satisfied, so what do we do? So, in that case we have to look at a more uh, rigorous stability criteria which is given by Nyquist and that is why there are two diagrams one is uh, given for Bode and one for Nyquist. So, the Nyquist stability criteria also follows from the same thought experiment however it is more general compared to the Bode stability criteria because uh, what you see in the Bode's uh, criteria or from the thought experiment is that uh, in order for to assess this stability all we need is uh, this signal should be sort of an inverted form of this. So, this inversion will happen when you have phase of minus pi, but the same thing will also happen at phase of minus 3 pi or minus twice n plus 1 pi. So, this uh, Nyquist plot then looks at all these successive periodic uh, values of frequency uh, when these phases are multiples of uh, 2 n plus 1 pi and then takes into consideration. So, uh, if AR and C are, if AR particularly is not a monotonous function of uh, omega, then uh, just satisfying this condition at uh, minus pi is not sufficient. You have to look at the condition at every successive 2n plus 1 pi and ensure that all those ARs are also less than 1. So, in the Nyquist condition, <coughs> checks for amplitude ratio at phi is equal to minus pi, minus 3 pi, minus 5 pi and so on. And it says that all these should be less than 1 
to ensure stability. So in a way it incorporates body stability condition as well. And the way this uh, stability condition is specified uh, is uh, using a Nyquist diagram. So it says that if you plot, if you generate a Nyquist plot of a feedback system and here you are actually computing the Nyquist uh, response for negative frequencies as well, these are like uh, uh, that is not a real this uh, imaginary part uh, which is uh, minus uh, infinity to 0 uh, frequency. This is just to uh, so that the Nyquist plot has a good shape. Uh, so what you do is uh, you <coughs> start with uh, you draw the Nyquist plot for all these frequencies and if it encircles uh, point minus 1 0 then the closed loop system is unstable. Uh, so now uh, what is so special about this point minus 1 0? When I say minus 1 0, uh, this particular point minus 1 0 <coughs> so minus 1 0 point it says uh, its amplitude ratio is uh, 1 and the phase is minus pi, minus 3 pi and so on. So this represents uh, all these points at which uh, you are going to have this inversion of the signal and so therefore if your Nyquist plot does not, if your Nyquist plot does not encircle this particular point uh, which means uh, we will have a stable response. So here is a figure, so this particular figure shows this is the minus 1 0 point which is shown in red. So this particular Nyquist plot. Uh, uh, has a multi uh, here the AR is not a monotonous function of omega, but you can see that uh, minus 1 0 lies outside all this. So it is a stable system whereas for this particular system this minus 1 0 point has been encircled uh, using this circle. So it is going to be an unstable system. So this is uh, the stability assessment in the frequency domain. So now if you want to get some uh, results from this uh, what we would see that for a first order process for simple first order process where g is kp over tau s plus 1. So the maximum phi or the maximum phase lag we are going to get is pi by 2 because the phase is minus 90. Uh, so, because of that uh, what uh, the, the phase will never reach, so phase never reaches minus pi, so omega crossover does not exist. So, as omega crossover does not exist, uh, this first order simple first order process is always stable. under P control because when you have a P control it is just going to add to the gain of the system so the phase it has no effect on the phase. Now when we look at the simple second order process G is Kp over tau square s square plus twice zeta tau s plus 1 uh, what you will see is that the maximum phase lag is uh, pi at which omega tends to infinity and AR tends to 0. So the omega crossover is actually an infinite frequency at which a second order system uh, will give you phase of minus pi and the corresponding AR is always 0. So even the second order system is also always stable under P control. So if you recall uh, the example which I had shown you as a 3 times in series because even if I would have considered single tank or two tanks in series uh, without any delay those systems will always be stable. So only when you have any system which is higher than second order without a delay that will have some limitation in terms of the proportional controller gain. Any first or second order system will not have any finite uh, uh, omega crossover. But the case changes uh, when you have any delay. 
So if you have but for first order plus date time, so when you have Kp over tau s plus 1 e raised to minus T d s, the phase is minus tan inverse tau omega minus T d omega and because of this term phi is equal to minus pi even for finite omega. So, omega crossover exists and is finite and therefore, you also have finite Kc for stability. So, the moment you add any time delay, uh, you are going to have some restriction from the stability limit. And note that we never approximated e raised to minus T d s. So, all the analysis which we have carried preserved uh, the transfer function e raised to minus T d s. So, therefore, the stability analysis which we are going to get from this is going to be accurate or it is going to be more accurate compared to a Laplace domain analysis. So, let us now complete uh, this discussion uh, by looking at the same uh, tutorial problem of the blender. So, the blender problem. So, back to blender problem which had measurement delay. So, the Laplace domain analysis was domain approximate stability limit was K c max equal to 8403. So, now let us look at uh, uh, what happens. Uh, so, here is the root locus diagram for that particular system. Uh, when there is no measurement delay, it is a simple flat line, it is all the poles move towards negative infinity, it is all stable because it is a first order process. When we have a measurement delay and we approximate it by a Paddy's approximation, you can see that uh, the root locus diagram does cut the imaginary axis at these two points when the gain is 8403. So, that was the stability limit computed by using Laplace domain analysis. When we move to the Nyquist plot and even though we consider any gain which is less than the stability limit which in this case is 8400, you will see that it is encircling the point minus 10. So, the frequency domain analysis is correctly pointing out that this particular uh, controller gain is unstable and uh, if we do the frequency domain analysis for this system, uh, what we will analyze uh, is that for frequency domain analysis, our GOL in that case is 8.33 10 raised to minus 4 over 3s plus 1. So, this is GP into GC is KC, GV is 1 and this is e raised to minus s. So, it is more or less like a first order plus dead time system. Uh, you can compute omega cross over such that phi is equal to minus pi. Uh, so, that omega cross over roughly comes out to be 1.5. 5 radians per whatever is the time unit and correspondingly if you equate and your AR is equal to 8.33 10 raise to minus 4 Kc over root of 1 plus 9 omega square. So, Kc max will be given uh, by at stability limit phi is equal to minus pi omega is equal to omega cross over AR should be equal to 1. So, substituting it to be 1 uh, you will get 1 plus 9 omega cross over square over 8.33 10 raise to minus 4 which comes out to be 6446. So, it 
the correct stability limit in this case is 6446 as against uh, what we have found using the Laplace domain analysis which was 8403. So if we use any gain between 6446 and 8403, the Laplace domain analysis is going to say that the system is stable, but the frequency domain analysis is going to say that the system is unstable. And if you simulate the system, you will indeed find that the maximum stability limit is uh, close to 6446. And here is the corresponding uh, Nyquist plot uh, when you use any KC which is less than 6000 you will see that this minus 1 0 point is outside uh, this Nyquist plot uh, so the system is going to be stable. So uh, we have now seen that uh, how do we uh, accurately capture the stability analysis of systems where there is significant dead time and uh, that we do by using a frequency domain analysis. Of which will be like capturing the amplitude ratio and phase as a function of uh, omega and then finding out uh, typically the crossover frequency would suffice uh, the job uh, and then you compute what is the amplitude ratio at that particular cross frequency if it is less than 1 the system is stable and if it is greater than 1 the system is going to be unstable. So that is about how do you assess the stability of feedback systems using frequency domain analysis. Thank you.